Jai Hind everyone. Today we are going to take a new topic in combat organization and architecture, modes of IO data transfer. Myself, Dr. Akhilesh Verma, uh, I am taking this topic for you and this topic will discuss about the various modes of IO data transfer. Previously, we have discussed about uh, the IO interface design. Now, within the IO interface design, various modes are there for taking the data from the interface. So, we very well know that the IO interface has two ends. Okay, this is inside the CPU and this is outside the CPU or outside world end. Fine. So, IO data transfer happens in three different modes programmed, interrupt and direct memory access. Now, if we consider IO module, there are few decisions that has to be taken by the IO module that we have discussed previously that IO module hides and reveal the device properties to the CPU. So, at this end there is a device, okay. So, CPU uh, has capacity to see this that is uh, IO device and it cannot see that is it is hidden and this is done through this IO module, okay. Apart from that, this IO module also supports multiple devices. So, at this point there is one device and at this point there is another device. So, multiple device can be connected to IO interface. And finally, it control the device function or leave for C. Okay. So, uh, uh, this has a role that uh, either it will take the uh, functions from the device and it will leave it for the CPU to utilize. Now, this mode of transfer is basically needed to have a communication between the central computer part to the IO device. Okay, so usually central CPU part we uh, wish to transfer the data to a space that is RAM. So, the data is transferred to the outside world with the RAM, okay. So, for this we need a uh, transferring modes and these are handled in variety of modes and three modes are we have programmed IO, interrupt driven IO and direct memory phased input out. Three ways we can have this transfer of data between the central computer part to the outside one. Okay, let us see one by one each uh, topic. Programmed IO. So, in programmed IO, Basically, instructions or you can say special instructions are the cause of doing the input output. So, special instructions of this is used that is called as IO instructions. Okay, this is written within a program by the explicit user and each data item is transferred, is initiated by the each instruction in the program. If I perform six instructions of IO, then we will transfer six data with the IO. If we perform seven instructions of IO, then we will transfer only seven. So, this is very important that the programmed IO instruction is due to the result of use of IO instruction written explicitly by the uh, programmer and it is corresponding to one transfer take a for one instruction. So, program controls this data transfer. Usually, the input output is under the control of 
the program itself what the user has written and this will be done in both direction to and from cpu and the periphery so the inside unit is cpu and the outside unit is periphery okay so program controls what to be sent from cpu to io and what to be read from io to cpu so transferring data under the program io requires constant monitoring of the peripherals by the cpu so this is very important thing that uh, when we are doing programmed io the cpu has to constantly monitor the peripherals it is something like that you are checking again and again the peripheral that whether data is available or not so if we see the sequence of operation that is performed and uh, we can easily identify that what is happening during the program dial so in the first step we can see that cpu request i operation cpu request i operations okay and this request is received by the io module so io module performs the whatever the request needed for the input output so io module will uh, request peripheral device to read or the take data okay now if the uh, this module operation is finished the io module will set the status bit it can be 1 and 0 both if it is 1 means it has completed the io module operation and the data is available at the io interface if it is 0 it means that it is not yet able to do the uh, io module operation and it is still waiting to data come from the peripheral device okay as soon as data reaches the zero status bit is changed to one okay so io status bit is one okay now how the cpu knows that the status bit is one or zero so cpu checks the status bit periodically so after some interval of time fixed interval of time the cpu will check whether this status bit is one or zero then after few interval of time then again it will check status bit it is one or zero the moment the cpu knows that status bit is one then it will start the reading of data from the io interface so we can see that the io module does not inform cpu directly so cpu is checking it on the regular basis by their own uh, inter uh, by their own cycle okay so what happens io module does not interrupt the cpu basically cpu checks the interface after some interval the cpu may wait or come back later okay the cpu will have to wait until the status bit is one okay so under programmed io data transfer it is very like a memory access cpu viewpoint so if you see from the cpu's viewpoint as <coughs> we uh, read memory like we are reading the io interface okay and i mean memory we do not wait for data to arrive we just put a request for data to the memory and whatever the data is available in the memory if it is allocated it will be sent to the cpu but in io it is not like that the data is available at the memory uh, io register so whenever there is a request it should be first confirmed by the io interface that is data is available and it should be confirmed to the status bit and the cpu basically checks not the io inter interface in inform cpu that data is available okay so each device is given a unique identifier to implement this uh, programmed io interface uh, we need to identify the address of the interface register because the request is going through cpu in form of just like a memory access and the memory access is addressed by address so likewise the io data is uh, referenced by the address so the unique identifier is given address fine now just think about is this approach good in terms of high speed computing requirement 
no certainly we will see that this particular step is creating a weight or bottleneck that is written here as a disadvantage advantage of program io the problem with the program io is that the processor has to wait a long time for the io module of concern to be ready for either reception or transmission both case the status bit until as it is one it cannot either receive or transmit okay so processor while waiting okay must repeatedly interrogate the status bit in io mode so what it means that it is doing nothing it is doing nothing because it has to just sit and watch the status bit on the regular basis so basically processor is not fully engaged in the computation task it is rather waiting just to check the status bit so what will be the performance of system then yes it will be severely degraded so if you see the transfer of each byte cons consider one one byte has to be transfer okay what steps we will perform read the status register check the status of the flag bit and branch to step number 1 okay if not set okay what will i do i will go to step number 1 okay if status is 0 and if status is 1 then i will go to step number 3 read the data so what will happen you will see uh, 2 to 1 2 to 1 you will be going multiple times and when status bit is 1 you will reach from 2 to 3 in one time so 1 2 to 1 2 cycle will repeat again again and that is the basically a waiting time now can you uh, improve the performance yes the improve this performance by another technique that is called as interrupt initiated io certainly when we are talk saying that it is interrupt initiated io means that it is not initiated by the cpu but rather than it is initiated by when data is available okay So when data is available, so basically there is an interrupt to be generated to the CPU. So we know that program method, uh, program I/O method, uh, process keeps the processor busy unlessly without any computational task. So this problem can be overcome by using an interrupt initiated I/O. In this, when the interface determines that the peripheral is ready for data, okay. that is the source or receiver which is trying to take the data and trying to giving the data it should be ready so when it is ready the interface uh, find out from the peripheral whether it is ready to receive or transfer data it generates the interrupt to the cpu after receiving the interrupt signal the cpu stops the currently executing task okay after completing it okay not uh, just stopping where it is it process and serves the io transfer and then returns back to the previous processing task so whatever task the cpu is doing it will complete it since it has got the interrupt then it will uh, go for the service of the interrupt uh, handling request because it has received data from the io interface so that is quite better the performance will be better than the io uh, program io fine now what are the steps cpu issues the read command okay and uh, it will send to the io module io module gets data from the peripheral while the cpu does otherwise so this is a fruitful engagement of cpu it is not just waiting for the data to come but it is waiting for it is not waiting it is particularly doing a computational task okay so after issuing read command the peripheral is doing its own job and cpu is doing its own job so it is something like that cpu computation is also going on io process is also going on parallel so when io module interrupts the cpu when data is available the cpu then requests for data and io module transfer data to cpu that's very simple okay so this is a flow diagram that we can visualize for the interrupt uh, interrupt initiated io 
so cpu issues a ia request and do something okay else fine and if the interrupt arrives the the read status bit is enabled so then io will send data to cpu okay in case there is some uh, error then it will go for the error checking condition and after this it will uh, go to the uh, next condition if it is a ready signal okay so uh, since uh, data is sent as a uh, status bit to the cpu that yes your data is available so now the, there should be a readiness between the io module and cpu and read word will then takes place from io to module okay similarly write word into the memory since data is taken from the io so it will be now kept in the memory okay so finally if the cycle is completed it will exit otherwise it will go and issue another read command or cpu will give another io request so what will happen for every io request the cpu will give the request then do something else and when there is a interrupt coming then io will ask for cpu that whether you are cpu will ask to io whether you are ready if ready signal is there then it will read the data from the io to the uh, io module and uh, io in, uh, peripheral to io module and then it will copy it back to the ram and the cycle will go in case there is error then error condition will be generated because many times there is a connection errors and data is not available and some conditions that is not well predefined and that condition will be handled through error handling now out of these two the first one that is programmed io and the second one that is the interrupt one can you further optimize it the second one yes we can further optimize in both cases we can see the cpu is engaged in first one also and the second one programmed run io and dma so can we remove this cpu engagement such that cpu is utilized somewhere else yes so removing cpu from the path and letting the peripheral device manage the memory buses okay so it is something like that for the time being the bus master is being shifted to the something else so it is not quite easy but it is done through a lieutenant and there there is a lieutenant that is called as dma okay so memory buses directly would improve the speed transfer and that is done through dma so the processor basically creates a one deputy of own and that is called as direct memory access in this the interface transfer data to and from the memory through memory buses and dma controller manages the transfer data between the peripheral and the memory okay so the cpu is not involved dma is involved on behalf of cpu okay so that cpu is fruitfully utilized for computation okay so interface transfer data to and from memory and dma controller manage that so many hardware system is required for that and that whole system is called as dma and it is usually used for the disk drive controllers and we basically it is needed for the higher data transfer from the io to the uh, main memory so you know that from this there is a very huge data from the graphics card we have very huge data from the network card we have very huge data from the sound card very huge data so if you read by byte by byte like with uh, programmed io or interrupt driven io it will take lots of time and uh, these are uh, very time driven applications uh, it won't give a real time effect so we need to have a mechanism that will preserve this time requirement so it is also used to intra chip data transfer also in multi core architecture there is a huge transfer of data between one core to another core so will process be engaged for this only no so dma is a deputy of cpu that would initiate the transfer first cpu, CPU will initiate then control transfer to the dma operations while the transfer is progress and receiver and interrupt from dma controller when the transfer has been completed so how it is done interrupt driven and program driven i require active cpu intervention 
transfer rate is limited processor to test and service the device cpu is tied up for managing io transfer okay additional module uh, hardware on the bus and dma controller takes over the cpu for io and dma is the uh, tries to do that this so dma module must use the bus only when the processor does not need it so it is not like that the deputy dma will use bus for always it will basically use for few cycles okay so the mechanism that they are using is called as cycle steaming the it must force the processor to suspend operation temporarily for few cycles okay and that is called cycle so from this diagram we can easily see that uh, interrupt breakpoint was existing in interrupt initiated io now we have initiated a dma breakpoint so we have fixed three places okay at the start of instruction and when two cycles has been completed especially after decode cycle and after another two cycles completed after that is execution cycle so at three point these three point are called as dma breakpoints so at this point the instruction cycle will forcefully uh, commanded by dma when dma is instructed by processor to do a dma transfer so dma will steal the few cycles okay from this place from this place so in between there will be few cycles that will be utilized by the cpu uh, D, uh, dma and few cycles will be utilized by the dma and one here okay so jain everyone and thank you for this uh, modes of transfer